quick video Don and I are up here in Branson and I'm with Matthew Cook back there behind me and he owns uh, a company called you want to help Needful us out? Needful Strings. I'm sorry? Needful Strings. Needful Strings and it's a dulcimer guitar shop here in Branson. They sell ukuleles a lot of things and I don't have a lot of time to do a video but I picked this Dirty 30s recording king uh, uh, from his collection. It's got uh, what looks like a homemade pickup in it, but it's, uh, it's a really, really nice little 12 fret from Recording King. And I've seen these things in stores, never played them. Everybody. welcome to the channel uh, tonight I wanted to do a, a bit of a plug for well a couple of things really uh, a gentleman that I met up in uh, Branson Missouri uh, Don and I were up there uh, to take a little vacation just a couple of days we spent uh, we we usually go up there every other year or so and uh, really enjoy it it's a nice family place uh, country music shows, uh, they've got uh, all various things uh, that I think everybody that, you know, had a family or or wanted to visit a place where uh, they didn't spend all their time worrying about how, the, how others were going to behave, uh, that, that could be a good place for you to consider up there. The place has virtually been uh untouched over the years uh, there's been some small growth changes to branson missouri but it uh it's definitely uh, it's nothing like what happened to eureka springs arkansas uh, as much as i hate to say it uh, when the kids were little we used to take them up to eureka springs and they're in arkansas northeastern arkansas and it, it's a or northern arkansas i guess and and it was a beautiful little town and uh, very family oriented. Uh, not nearly so much today. As a matter of fact, uh, there's no way I'd take young children up there. Uh, however, Branson, which was going on at the exact same time, people like Jim Stafford, Roy Clark had a place up there at one time. For those of you that know who Roy Clark is, and. Uh, uh, you know, uh, several different folks uh, had country music venues up in Branson, Missouri. Now, a lot of those folks have passed on, uh, but there's some new folks in and doing some great stuff and obviously great musicians up there. Uh, but they've also got a bunch of attractions too, which is really nice. Anyway, I ran into Matthew Cook. You saw it in the introductory piece of this where I had Donna film, uh, uh, film me playing this guitar right here, which I'm going to tell you a little bit about. I actually walked out of the shop with it. Uh, but uh, Matthew was a heck of a nice guy. And you know what's funny is, is uh, I'm going to put a picture up of the front of that building, and I'm, I've driven by it over the years many, many times, and I never stopped in. Because the thing that stood out to me was it was kind of a dulcimer place. And I love dulcimer music, don't get me wrong. But uh, I've never had an interest really in picking up dulcimer, so I just I never stopped in. Well, uh, we decided to go ahead and stop in and, and look around. And lo and behold, he not only sells dulcimers, which, by the way, they'll teach you how to play one of those things before you leave the shop. Uh, 
And, uh, but he, he doesn't just do those. He also has harmonicas. He has ukuleles. And we'll put a few photographs up as we go. And he also uh, has some, I will say he carries budget guitars. And by budget, I mean probably super budget guitars. You know what I mean? So, and this was one of them that was hanging on the wall. And I took it down, looked at it, and I looked in the sound hole and it said, uh, Recording King Dirty 37 Series. Not Dirty 30 Series, but Dirty 37. Uh, and and if, I, if I have what little bit of homework I was able to find on these, uh, if I've got this right, so the Dirty 30 Series, I think, comes in solid uh, Sitka spruce top and and solid mahogany back and sides and uh, you know so it's got a really and it's probably in that four four to five hundred dollar range. Uh, these this dirty thirty seven series is a spruce top with some kind of uh, what they call white wood I guess back and sides and they they actually uh, paint the back of this thing so. Uh, but it's got that retro, you know, kind of 1937 look to it, I guess you could say. And it's got the butter bean kind of tuners, uh, uh, the uh, ivory looking tuners. And they're closed back uh, tuners. And, and I'm sure they're some kind of inexpensive uh, closed back tuners. But, but they hold the tune well enough. And then they've got this checkered looking, and I forget what you call this, uh, uh, but whatever it is, it's kind of a checkered look to the binding on here. And I, I don't have my reading glasses on, so I don't know if you can see that or not. But there you go. It's kind of a, uh, it's kind of pretty uh, the way they did it. Uh, the the top is has the binding on it. The back doesn't have any binding on it. The neck is kind of chunky C. And uh, I don't know what this wood is on the fretboard, but I'm guessing probably some kind of micarta, as well as the uh, uh, the bridge back here. I, I do believe it has a bone nut and a bone saddle. Probably plastic pins, but but that saddle, I believe, is bone. And so is this, not saddle, but uh, bridge. No, saddle, sorry. Uh, the saddle is bone, and, and this nut feels like bone to me as well. So uh, the guitar is somewhere in the neighborhood of $250. It's got a gold foil pickup in it. Kind of, I guess they want to take you back to kind of de Armand days. Uh, is that how you say de Armand? Uh, I think that's how you pronounce that brand. But uh, they made a go full pickup back in the day, and they may still make them. And, and they've got one in here. Uh, I plugged it up. Uh, not crazy about it, but, uh, but hey, what do you want for 250 bucks, right? So uh, I could live without the pickup, but... Uh, but it's a cool little guitar. It's a zero class size. So if you think it looks small, it's very small. So you have zeros and then you have double O's like uh, the Gibson uh, L double O. Uh, if you're familiar with that one, would be the next size up from this in body size. And then you have a triple O, OM, which is basically the same body style. And then you move into the dreadnought category. So uh, in the jumbo category. So uh yeah, uh, this is the small one. I mean, this is the one that uh, in the late 1800s, somebody would have been sitting around in somebody's parlor, which is how it got the uh, term attached to it to begin with because they used to play them in the parlor. And if you're too young to know what a parlor is, it's it was, the, it was a room off to the entry of a lot of old homes uh, where people entertained, you know. So if you were... Uh, uh, I guess if your daughter was dating somebody, the guy would... Uh, or courting, getting courted... Back then, I called it courting. Uh, it's probably a lot, uh, a lot milder than it is today. And and you know, if a young fellow wanted to bring his guitar over, well, he'd bring it over and sing to her there in the parlor. And then everybody else in the house could kind of eavesdrop, right? <laughs> uh, but that's how they used to do it. And uh, I'm not too sure we shouldn't go back to that. And some of you who have daughters out there might agree. But I, I like this thing, and I think it's got. Uh, it's a really nice, nice guitar. Uh, but back to Matthew for a second. Uh, I had not been up in uh, that shop ever and driven by it. It's on the main strip there on 76 between uh, uh, downtown and Gretna, uh, for those of you that know Branson a little bit. But uh, it's closer to Gretna, I think. 
yeah. But a really, really uh, great little shop in there. And they've got, of course, they've got no photos where you get old photos done and all that kind of thing. So I want to put a few photographs of that and kind of give him a plug. And, and maybe just share with you what I thought about this little Zero uh, Recording King. It's, it's what's, what strikes me about it is, uh, first of all, it's just a few hundred bucks. And the other thing was, was the frets were actually done very, very nice. Uh, not cutting myself doing this, you know, and normally you would on some of these uh, cheaper Chinese guitars because that's where this one was made, was in China. And I know this is a laminate back and sides. I'm, I wouldn't be surprised to find out the top's laminate. But you know what? It's got some volume to it, folks. Uh, it does actually have some volume. to it because the fretboard I think is a 16 inch radius on a kind of a chunky neck and that's a different feel uh, but but it's a it's a really nice guitar especially if you just want to sit around and do a little finger style you know it's uh I don't know if I can get through this without messing it up may have to pause the video but uh let's see well folks I did have to pause the video and kind of play on this a second because I haven't done this little tune in a little while and uh, the action is a little bit high on the guitar. It's not bad. Uh, I can bring the saddle down. Uh, down here at the nut, it's it's pretty good. Could stand to come down just a tad, but I'll bring it down back here, and I think that'll solve it. But the neck straight is an arrow, so there's no issues there. Anyway, uh, this song in particular, I think it's like Nobody Knows You When You're Down and Out, but I don't know the name of the song, but that's what I call it. That may be the name of the song. I don't know. But uh, it's precisely the kind of song that would have been done back then on, on a guitar like this when it first came out. got pretty good sustain on it for a $200 recording king. I'd say if you're looking for a starter guitar for your son or your daughter or your niece or your nephew, uh, you know, and, and you weren't sure if they were going to stick with it long term, uh, pick this, you might want to pick this thing up and you know, I, I would play it first uh, just to make sure you didn't, you know, end up getting something that uh, that you shouldn't. But it's a nice little blues box. Uh, and it's also good, you know, like I say, if somebody's kind of starting out, it's got enough volume to it. It's not, it doesn't make your fingers bleed, you know. Somebody pointed out to me the other day, uh, I had done that Yamaha F, FS5 review on the channel. And I said, I thought it'd make a great beginner guitar for somebody. Uh, if you're a millionaire uh, and you're getting your son a beginner guitar, yeah, the Yamaha FS5 probably would do it. Uh, but for most of us that aren't, uh, and we're not wealthy, uh, if you're going to get a starter guitar for somebody, you, you don't want to make a huge investment till you know that they're going to stick with it. This this might be a really good one to do that with. It's it's the only, I think I paid two, 220 bucks uh, for this guitar uh, out the door. And it... You know, that's not a lot of money. That It's not a lot of money in terms of seeing what, gauging what somebody's interest is and whether or not they're going to be playing long term. I think it would make a good starter guitar. You probably have to pull the saddle, but I, like I said, I'd play this thing first. Make sure the, the neck angle's right and everything plays fairly well. And then you can just sand the saddle down, uh, saddle down a little bit for them, and I, I think they really enjoy it.
I like it. Bye. And then I'm going to say one more time, uh, go up and see Matthew next time you're in Branson. Visit with him. He's a good guy. He's got a YouTube channel. So I'm going to link up uh, the name of the shop, as you heard in the opener. Uh, and I'll leave it to what you heard in the opener because it I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. Uh, actually, I've got it right here. So let me go ahead and mention it one more time before I hop off of here. Uh, the name of this company is Needful, Needful Strings. Needful Strings. And uh, I'm going to put the website. It's uh, needfulstringsllc.com. And I'm going to put his phone number in there as well in the description. Because if you go to the website and you like something, just pick up the phone and call him. Have him play it for you. You know, and go and ask him about the action on it. You know, is it survivable? Uh, just, you know, he, he's a good, honest guy. I think you really enjoy this fella. And, uh, but anyway, I'll uh, stick his phone number in there along with his website. And uh, hopefully you folks will, next time you get to Branson, you'll check him out. And also, don't forget to check out his website. If you're looking for some of these less expensive recording kings, it doesn't have to be a dirty 37. It could be a dirty 30s series. Uh, he's got a few more in there. He's got some of the Recording King Dreads, which I think are in that Dirty 30 series. Uh, so he's a reasonable guy, folks, and I thoroughly enjoyed spending time in his shop. And, uh, yeah, thought the world of the guy. I'll be going back to see him again. A heck of a nice guy. All right, folks, that's about all I've got. Just wanted to do a review on this little Dirty 37 Recording King uh, and let you know what I thought about it. Is it worth a couple hundred bucks? Yeah, I think so. Now, would I pay more than that for it? No, I probably wouldn't. But uh, not too shabby when you think about it. Came with this go full pickup. You know, you got a jack right here on the bottom. Uh, you'd have to put a strap button on it if you want to stand up and play it. But again, it's a parlor guitar, so you know I'm gonna spend most of my time in the parlor with it, right? <laughs> It's good to see everybody. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you'll uh, give Matthew a shout. Oh, God bless each and every single one of you. I really do appreciate you. We'll see you next time.